Medieval times of Knights of Honor await you. Hey everyone, welcome to Knights of Honor series. Uh, this is a uh, quite old real-time strategy game uh, released in 2004. Um, now it may not be uh, a, an impressive game by today's standards, especially if you uh, just look at the graphics, but uh, I think it's uh, an amazing game, uh, really in-depth and um, it's always a lot of fun to play. And um, you know there are quite a lot of small details you need to pay attention along the way uh, for your kingdom to succeed and not fall apart. And um, you know, for somebody who has never played it before, you can look at it as a uh, kind of a beginner's guide. As I will try to, uh, you know, explain everything along the way and kind of uh, walk you through. But uh, again, there is really a lot of stuff happening, especially in the beginning, which may be overwhelming. So. Um, if you are confused, just uh, I ask you to have a little bit of patience and uh, hopefully everything will make sense along the way. Now I'm just gonna start a campaign and um, I'm gonna start a new campaign. Now this is the first window that you'll see, which is basically to uh, choose a few options uh, of your campaign and also choose your uh, kingdom. Now there are three different uh, times available in the game. There is one around uh, 1350 AD or 1200 and 1000. I will probably play um, in early uh, times, so around 1000 AD. Now this is all the, uh, the list of all the kingdoms that you can play with. And if you click on any of those here, you will get a small, uh, like a pop-up here, uh, telling some historical facts about this kingdom. Now me personally, I'm gonna go ahead and play with uh, Georgia, simply because I am Georgian. And if you are interested, you can uh, uh, read this description here to, uh, to learn a couple of things about the 
uh, country and uh, kingdom in those times now here you can switch the modes alone this is a list mode of the kingdoms and you can go and take a look at their map uh, in uh, around 1000 AD now if you take a closer look at this you'll notice that this is basically a, uh, a Europe map and some uh, northern Africa and uh, some uh, I guess Middle East here um, now next thing you want to choose at the difficulty level now there is easy normal and hard I want to go with hard and there is this one uh, option here which is very important pause during battles basically what this means is that um, when you're playing and uh, you, let's say somebody attacks your castle or something like that uh, you have option to let it uh, uh, battle by itself so to speak uh, like CPU against CPU and um, but you have also the option to go in the battle and uh, uh, lead your uh, troops and if you do that you enter the battlefield and you cannot control the outside world anymore so if you leave this checked um, while you are in the battle the kind of time freezes so nothing else will happen outside of that battlefield which may be a good idea for beginners but uh, I'm gonna now uh, uncheck this so it's realistic and when I'm in uh, in one battle let's say uh, in the meantime something else may happen and let's say my other castle may be under attack and I will not be <coughs> there to defend it which makes it obviously uh, more difficult and more realistic so this is it um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and play now uh, the start so to speak is always random uh, like in a you are always put in a different uh, situations and as you uh, can notice first of all is that uh, Georgia is the smallest kingdom as it can be uh, I have only one uh, town or castle if you will um, and uh, here in the uh, right bottom corner you can see kind of a small uh, snippet of the world map and where you are right now and this white sign means that this is your place like you own it now <clears throat> first thing I always like to do is take a look at my gold here and make sure that it's not negative meaning right now I have 962 well already 56 gold and it's decreasing by 6 per I don't know a few seconds uh, now I want to make sure that this is number is not negative and I'm not losing gold uh, because well I really need gold so next thing I do is take a look at my kingdom like royal family you'll see that this guy is the king and I will explain all of those stuff in details this is a uh, queen so his wife and we've got two princes and one princess princess and uh, so at this point I'm just gonna quickly use one of those royal family members so in this case let's say king and assign him as a, a merchant so that I can trade and make sure that my gold is not reducing itself so by trading you actually gain gold now as you can see I clicked on trading here but I have no one to trade with meaning I don't have trading agreement with any other kingdom so next thing I want to do is click on this button here to go in uh, political view and find some kingdom who maybe would like to trade with me now there's a lot of stuff to go through here which I will explain uh, just in a second as soon as I find someone to trade with and uh, make sure that my uh, gold income is in fact uh, positive now just quick one here I will I mention this I asked uh, this uh, Fatimids here for trading agreement and they said that they will agree to it if uh, I'm okay with the marriage between my uh, princess and their prince and at this point this is really insignificant for me so I'm just gonna click OK um, plus at the same time they are quite a big kingdom so it won't hurt to have them as allies as you can see now we are uh, allied in terms of marriage so now I have this uh, kingdom to trade with and if I go to this guy again who I assigned as uh, merchant I can trade with a kingdom with Fatimids and it gives me plus 4 gold 
now that's not all that much but that is a beginning now so for minus six it became minus two i would really like to have another one um, and these guys that i'm picking here in the empty slots are just my royal family so i have them available to me now i, I need to find another kingdom to trade with because really the objective is to make sure that that gold income is positive and uh, I'm not losing money I mean gold so I'm just searching for some kingdom who would maybe trade with me but unfortunately they don't now they want one-time donation for trading you know what I'm just gonna agree to that just because I'm desperate and I cannot afford to have negative balance although it turns out that they only give me two gold so I only have plus one right now now this is a very rough beginning I usually get way more lucky than this um, in terms of uh, trading and uh, gold income now this is extremely painfully slow and I'm gonna have to do something to uh, make this work now but I guess it could make the series more interesting and challenging now next thing I wanna check is if I um, am not war with anybody and I am not I quickly made sure that about that by checking this my economy and you can see this is a war tax and you can ask for a war tax only and only if you are at war with at least one kingdom and the fact that this is not available to me means that I am at peace with every single kingdom in the world right now which is a plus at this point because I don't have any army now speaking of which let's check army now I'm gonna just take a few seconds I mean a few minutes uh, off from the gold situation to go over some other important parts of the game at the beginning especially which is obviously army and your uh, kingdom uh, your um, marshal so they can this guy here on the horse this is my marshal Akakite and um, he has no soldiers now you can navigate them by uh, first of all uh, choosing them with left uh, left mouse click and to tell them to go somewhere it's with a right mouse click now I want to bring him into the castle here and you can have only one marshal at the time in a uh, castle now uh, the soldiers um, there is basically two ways you can help soldiers one is to put them in your castle so to speak as a defense and these are the slots for it the garrison army slot which will stay in the castle and there is in total six slots available as you can see and the second way uh, second uh, way is to have your um, army in uh, assigned to your marshal and each marshal has always nine slots available and these four extra slots which are for siege stuff which we will get uh, to a little bit later in the game so also uh, you always want to make sure to uh, feed your marshal and your army and you can only do that if your marshal with his army is inside the castle and you can do it by clicking on this uh, food icon here also this uh, 200 is the capacity of my um, castle's uh, food storage and it's growing by uh, four um, now there is also another uh, few things here that my uh, my town produces in total there is so food there is workers gold uh, piety and books now each of them are generated by different uh, uh, different uh, I don't know infrastructures in your um, uh, town such as the far produces food you have monastery that produces piety I've got another farm here so food is doing well and there is a village that uh, produces workers um so next thing now that uh, i am not war with anybody and nobody is trying to conquer me i uh, can explore a couple of more things in peace 
so royal family there is a weird uh, rules about royal family that you want to get used to uh, so the first thing uh, king and queen now queen you cannot use in any way in game at all uh, you know she's just a queen um, and the king now you can look at uh, some information about the king here uh, very important one here is uh, age and he's middle-aged um, and kings die in the game right um, so <clears throat> he still has some way to go and the way this works is um, when king dies uh, the uh, first prince which is in this case this guy here Bagrat force uh, becomes the king and he in, uh, he as well will die after some time right he will get old and he will die but uh, but if I uh, have more than one if my king has more than one uh, son like right now uh, this second prince uh, will not die <laughs> so the first prince becomes the king and he will die but when that happens uh, the second prince or the third prince as well uh, they will be available to me in my this three slots here uh, forever unless they die let's say in battle so what I always do is that um, I use my king and my uh, like firstborn son, so to speak, who will become the king later, as like merchant or something like that, maybe like a priest or whatever, uh, just so that uh, I'm not using them as marshals. That's my point, because uh, marshals um, over time when they get gain experience in battles, you can. Uh, like level up their skills and their own army and if let's say I used my king as a marshal and then the king died after some time first of all I would lose all these skill points that I um, uh, that I used to level up the, my uh, martial king and at the same time um, you know I would have to relocate my army and so on and so forth so basically I'm trying to use always as marshals like second and third prince so that they will uh, always uh, uh, will be available to me and they will not die uh, unless I get them somehow killed in uh, in a battle so that's uh, first bit of advice don't use uh, unless uh, you know emergency situation don't use your king or f uh, firstborn son as a as a marshal uh, plus if your king accidentally gets killed in the battle that's like a disaster your country uh, your kingdom just uh, falls apart falls apart completely now back to the army um, if I wanna uh, add some uh, soldiers to my army I'm gonna have to click on the empty slot and you'll, you'll see that I have only one unit available which is peasants and they are uh, by definition the worst uh, of the uh, warriors because they are in fact no warriors they're just peasants with some uh, uh, you know tools and they are always available to you no matter what and you can see there are some other uh, units that I could have had but I don't right now uh, some local units and some kingdom special units over there and that is because for example for swordsmen to uh, become available to you you need to have an establishment uh, that is called swordsmiths right without smart swordsmiths you cannot uh, have swordsmen and uh, the way you can build swordsmiths in your uh, town is by going to town improvements there is all the places that are currently built in your town and these are the empty slots that you can use and I will find here in military buildings category a, a swordsmith now you can see that I cannot build it right now for two reasons first it requires 1000 gold which I do not have and second it requires training grounds in other establishments establishment which I also don't have which I can find right here and training ground I cannot build simply because of the gold so gold is a big issue right now also if I wanted to uh, 
you know uh, build some defenses around my uh, around my castle I can't because the uh, most basic um, defense uh, which is uh, palisade palisade this costs for thousands gold and I don't have nearly enough which brings us back to the gold situation I need way more uh, way more income than uh, these two gold now what can I do in this case honestly not that much uh, generally the way you uh, earn more gold is when you conquer other towns um, and well that's the biggest uh, biggest factor and the second is trading and although I have two merchants now which is generally quite good I just said they don't generate much income for me um, so the best thing I could do right now is uh, go around and try to excuse me uh, try to find someone who would trade with me and hope that they will maybe generate more uh, gold than the current ones which uh, is also unlikely <clears throat> All right, so I know with Germany I'm already in trading agreement. Right, this doesn't seem to be working very well. Um, all right, so okay, what else can I do? Well, as I said, I can try to conquer someone, but I am nowhere near that either because you need some decent army to uh, go ahead and declare war against some other kingdom and try to conquer them so at this point all I can get are peasants and also not that much uh, not that many of them because each peasant costs 50 gold and I currently have uh, 175 so I can get three you know soon four of those units but that is just way too few and way too bad quality army uh, to be able to uh, attack anyone at all so that's not an option um, I'm trying to think now if there is any other possible way to um, uh, to earn some gold I haven't played the game in quite a while as well but I, I don't I don't think so honestly uh, I, I can't think of any other way to earn some gold now there is this option where you can regulate the taxes currently I'm charging like normal taxes but it has no income either because uh, you know my kingdom is so small now I could ask for double taxes but this will give me maybe like one or two extra gold and it's really not worse because when you do that uh, you'll notice here this is a uh, happiness level and the happiness level will drop which is problematic in the game this is something you need to really pay attention to when your happiness level is in you know uh, negative values then you'll get um, uh, what's it called rebels rebellion armies and you'll just have to you know put them down <laughs> so that's uh, that's something I really uh, like to avoid whenever possible because it's sometimes quite uh, quite painful to deal with them especially now when I don't have any army whatsoever so it would me it would be really a poor choice to double the taxes right now um, so um, I mean other than waiting I honestly don't see many options right now I'll try to uh, ask for some more uh, trading agreements a little bit later but for now I would go over some more basics here uh, once I open the political view we are in kingdoms mode here there are some other modes like relations and you can see uh, for example uh, this kingdom here have like available I think prince and princess so to speak that's the signs here the icons I am in trading agreement with them and stuff like that here is some stances so if there are uh, like any um, uh, pacts and stuff like that 
and there are for example religions different religions so different uh, colors I believe yeah some rebellion list and so on right now something that uh, is always um, useful to check is the relations right here now currently I'm not at war with anybody but if I was if I were then there would be this uh, war sign like for example if I click on Byzantia then I will see Byzantia's relationship with other with other kingdoms and you'll see that they are at war with Armenia it seems so there is this icon right here so this way I can have a quick overview who I am at war with if I but right now I'm not so yeah and another thing <coughs> is you can uh, so for example Byzantia when I uh, click on it um, you'll see some information about the kingdom so the current king Basilius or Emperor or whatever and then here is the, your relationship status bar uh, uh, with Byzantia this is the guy himself and uh, these are some uh, relation status icons right now we are at peace uh, shown by this uh, white uh, I can't remember the name of the bird but you know what I mean uh, then this would be for marriage which I have now this marriage agreement for example to uh, to Fatimids so when I clicked on Fatimids you can see that then there is the one for trade there is some uh, pact of non-aggression you can sign and there is also uh, some uh, alliance pact but these two I don't have right now so they are <coughs> they are not highlighted I can also check some basic stats of the kingdom like economy uh, some rumors and some relations also if you click on the uh, current uh, you know king emperor or whatever of the country then you got some uh, audience you know you can offer some stuff to the kingdom you know gift a non-aggression pact a royal welding uh, you can demand some stuff for them from them um, you can break agreements if you have any in this case I do so I can break them or declare war but right now I can't because I have these relations so if I wanted to declare war first I would have to break the agreements uh, and generally I uh, recommend you not to do that unless it's absolutely necessary uh, because if I broke the agreements now for no good reason what would happen is first of all I would go to war with them very likely and uh, second here you can see something called uh, kingdom power and you start with zero always neutral and um, you can go to negative five or positive five this is the range and when you break relationship like relationships like that to other kingdoms um, your kingdom power goes down so first you earn way less money you your uh, people uh, get uh, unhappy and it just brings problems so also all the time you want to be trying to level this one up so if I had now 525 coins I would definitely click on this to um, increase my kingdom power and in return um, you know my people would be happier I would get more income here as you can see some of the incomes are here broken down and kingdom power is one of the uh, uh, factor here which right now doesn't generate me any gold because it's zero now if it was one two three or something like that then uh, any positive uh, kingdom power would generate me some amount of coins depending on how big my kingdom is so this is also quite quite important now as it seems our wait is uh, forever here for some gold um, man if I could only have a decent army to declare war to Armenia and just conquer them that would also produce some gold for me but um, let's see so for nine of those I need 450 coins so 
you know, if I had 450 coins, I would even risk, it is a big risk, but I would risk to attack Armenia with just local units of uh, peasants, which, uh, you know, generally is very ill-advised, uh, but I am just really stuck right now, and I, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, oh, so some news uh, about uh, your kingdom you always get here on the left corner as a notification so to speak and this one is trading agreement offered from this uh, papacy or uh, yeah papacy i don't know how to pronounce it uh, and he says uh, well met george first king of georgia the dog of papacy is pleased to offer well see georgia a trade agreement what do you say i say i accept of course and now now, I have no way of knowing currently how much uh, gold would it generate for me to uh, trade with them. So what I'm gonna do, currently I have one more royal family member available to me, which is this third, uh, the second prince and I'm not using him currently so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use him temporarily as a merchant and trade with this papacy here and I apologize if I pronounce it wrong and uh, which is very likely and in general this uh, there are some uh, quite old terminologies here that I am not very well but I, but that I'm not very uh, you know aware of and I just read some stuff and likely pronounce wrong uh, in a wrong way so um, I apologize for that um, uh, so in the meantime once I uh, started trading with prophecy they are giving uh, five golds so in total now this increased to eight which is uh, way better than two um, but I want to keep an eye on the king here uh, before he dies right i really need to uh, revert this um, prince back and use him as a uh, as a uh, marshal because uh, once uh, the king dies this guy will stay here as a merchant forever and i will not be able to you know um, change his role uh, to marshal on the other hand, I can see here now that he has zero stars in warfare, so I may as well just leave him as a as a merchant. On the other hand, I really need more than one marshal really soon, <coughs> because currently I only have one, and that is yes, not sir. gonna be enough uh, very soon. Right, right now it's fine, but generally you need like two, three and more. <clears throat> so now I have two options I've got a little bit of gold so I could either build these training grounds and then wait to build swordsmiths and then wait to hire, uh, hire swordsmiths or just go with peasants right now right here and attack Armenia now that is a uh, difficult decision to make now, if I was uh, playing alone by myself, uh, I would uh, I would take the more reasonable option, which is waiting. But I don't want to sit here uh, hours to wait for my goal to be I don't know a few thousand I would need for all of those. So I'm just gonna grab some peasants and hope for the best, basically, which uh, I do not recommend you to do. <laughs> ever now this is something very important here army morale which is right now uh, you know not good it looks uh, but also don't look too bad the point is that the morale of peasants is generally very low so once you are in a battlefield uh, they lose morale very quickly and then they just give up fighting you know 
uh, so you really don't want that to be happening um, they just retreat without uh, like you cannot control them anymore uh, they just you know show white flag and run away so uh, preferably this is one more reason why you don't want to be why you don't want to be uh, fighting with uh, peasants so um, I'm just way. getting close to the kingdom so I give them no warning just tell them hey I'm gonna declare war and attack the same second as you can see our relationship with Armenia is anyway uneasy and they would declare war to us uh, any second anyway so I'm just gonna take the first step here and just really risk it um, Okay, we can receive the message that Byzantia is pleased that our troops have marched upon Armenia. That is because Byzantia is currently at war with Armenia. So, you know, maybe our relationship will get better with Byzantia and they are a powerful ally to have right now. So, hope for the best. Okay, so I'm gonna declare war to Armenia right now. Declare war. And attack. Now, as you can see here, I have three options. I can assault, I can lead myself or retreat. So right now, I'm just going to lead myself and we will enter the battlefield. Now, honestly, right off the bat, this looks very bad for, for us. Uh, you can see the morale here is horrible. Four, and they have eleven. Very good. They are defending their castle here. They have some town guards, which are way, way better than peasants, and just don't look good right now. So, just gonna all charge all of them and hope for the best. Which uh, I don't see this head going my way like ever morale is already to one and my guys are just retreating so there you go oh no they received reinforcements and this is literally war over i mean battle over right now i stand zero chance literally right now so what I'm gonna do, I hate to do this, but I am going to retreat. Right, this is the only thing I can do, otherwise I would lose my marshal as well. So, that's just about it. Right, so this is the start. As you can see, you are putting some tough situation sometimes when you start the game on hard level um, especially if you don't want to wait for your gold to get uh, to to like collect decent amount and then go with some uh, some decent army um, so I took a risk now it didn't work out uh, but that's just the beginning so I'm feeling good about this actually I like challenge in the game and this is uh, one of the games that I actually do always and I always enjoy it So it's just gonna be an uphill battle from here, but I'm just looking forward to it Now you notice here as soon as Armenia crossed our border here. I got a notification that Armenia um, Has invaded the province of Georgia meaning they just entered my my uh, my province here uh, So now I'm going back to the <coughs> castle and they are following, uh, which means I would probably need to add a few more uh, peasants just to be able to defend them, defend against them. Although they just camped here, they may not attack the castle in the end. Um, I would definitely be able to defend, I think, uh, because I also have town guards like they did. Basically, town guards are extra units that you that they don't occupy the slots here but they are always in the town if somebody attacks you and you can help them by building town 
watch house which is already built right now and if you have this uh, thing built uh, you will have town guards if somebody is attacking and that is a great extra help first of all they are decent uh, uh, warriors and second they don't take any slot here so you can still have all six slots and plus town guards uh, in the meantime I do have 400 uh, gold oh, okay I so thought I needed 400 for uh, training grounds but I need 500 so as soon as I get 500 I'm just gonna start building this here just to um, you know uh, slowly get to the point where uh, where I can have an actual uh, army from let's say swordsmiths or maybe uh, maybe um, archers now for archers I would need a uh, Fletcher and the Fletcher uh, just as um, swordsmith requires uh, training grounds so either way I need to build training ground first as you can see it's building here it needs to in total 200 uh, so to speak uh, workers and I have only three at a time so this is just gonna increase uh, by three uh, I don't know if you every few seconds and once it reaches 200 it will be built and here also on the right top corner will be always displayed all the uh, current uh, uh, buildings that are in construction and this uh, green bar here shows the uh, uh, the what's it called uh, <laughs> I can't remember the word like how far it's built you know, progress right so progress now in the meantime it seems like Armenia uh, troops went back uh, left my uh, province so I uh, can maybe prepare in peace to attack them once more now you may notice here that my happiness level uh, went red uh, just one percent but still that is not good and the reason for that is wars <clears throat> and you can see people don't like wars obviously now one thing I could have done and I didn't yet and I'm stupid for it is that uh, in the gold income breakdown you can see that I get zero, zero gold from taxes anyway and I have normal taxes now if I set this to no taxes I will still have the same amount of gold income overall because taxes had no influence on my gold income but on the other hand what it does is it improves by five percent the happiness level of my town so this way I don't lose anything in terms of money but simply because I officially don't take any taxes this um, increases the happiness uh, uh, happiness level of, of people um, now in this case it doesn't play any role but when your kingdom is a little bit bigger then normal taxes actually do produce some uh, gold income so you may want to you know um, choose what's better for you now I got some notification here uh, the world CS rule, ruler is apparently the uh, uh, Earl of Highlands called Edgar which is absolutely uh, and it has absolutely no influence to me right now um, so training grounds is being built 42 percent now here you can also notice that what is this pact of non-aggression offered from Fatima so I'm gonna uh, accept that um, so uh, when I attacked Armenia I lost two uh, units entirely and partially some of them now if I wanted to refill them so to speak then I could do it here with this uh, plus signs like plus sign is to refill the current uh, highlighted squad or this kind of multiplication sign is to refill all of them and it also displays the cost of refilling um, your units and currently I have no, uh, no need to refill them uh, so I'm just gonna hold on to my my gold here to be ready uh, and build the uh, 
swordsmith uh, after training rounds is done um, and by the way you cannot build more than one building at a time in your in your province so I have to wait before this one finishes either way uh, but yeah I also don't have enough gold so have to wait anyway uh, <clears throat> right so I apologize if this is uh, way too slow uh, in terms of development but that's just how it is once I have um, like any amount of gold really a few thousand or so uh, then it's gonna get really intense and um, a lot of action uh, you know uh, be at war with uh, multiple kingdoms I know you are attacking someone someone is attacking you you have to defend you have to attack all the time and it's just very uh, very exciting uh, so it's just gonna you know that's gonna start happening uh, quite soon uh, I would say so just uh, you know have some patience <clears throat> now uh, there are also uh, really a lot of um, available units in total in the game here you can see a list of I think all of them here these are the lowest tier peasants which I currently have and they are marked with this uh, green um, sign as well now the next basic ones are swordsmen now <clears throat> I'm, I don't have them yet but I can get them quite easily and also on the map it shows in green which uh, towns or provinces currently produce swordsmen then there are archers nothing special about them I can you can tell you know they're just regular swordsmen they are regular arch, uh, archers then there are spearmen and now here starts already some interesting ones you know there is light cavalry you've got some horse archers some men at arms and you can also see a small description when you hover over them now mm. I have some of my favorites here and I will uh, talk about them later on once we have them available uh, but generally the squads here the I mean the units here uh, differ in many ways such as the size so how many uh, how many soldiers are in each unit right also what are their ability to kill in close range uh, what is their ability to kill in uh, in um, the long range right so for example swordsmen are great in short uh, uh, short range archers are for long range then there is also what is their morale you know some units have high morale so they will keep fighting even if uh, it doesn't look good some have low morale like peasants who will just very easily retreat uh, some you know difference are for example in speed also how fast they move and all of this you can take a look when once you are in the battlefield and I will be I'll make sure to do that when I have a chance next time um, and also very important one their armor so they have different uh, uh, different types of armor so uh, some uh, you know uh, don't die very quickly because they have good armor but for example swordsmen the basic ones they don't have very good armor so their protection is not that good now some of the really good ones here are uh, Templars they are extremely uh, strong then uh, Teutonic Knights also very strong but then there is this trade-off you know how strong they are you know what's their protection and at the same time how many uh, warriors do we have in unit right so you need to really uh, choose what works best for you and uh, just go with that and I generally uh, don't seem to ever make cavalry work in any way even the really good ones they just die so quickly uh, because also cavalry cavalry has have usually a uh, very uh, little amount very small amount of uh, soldiers in unit like 10 or 20 while uh, the let's some sort of swordsmen or templars and so on they uh, have you know 30 or 40 and quite decent warriors so we'll go over uh, uh, through all of them uh, later on once they become available to us in the meantime uh, the the uh, training grounds has finished building 
and I just missing what 150 uh, gold to build swordsmith and then we can slowly start uh, building an actual army from swordsmen which as I you know I said they are not that good but at the early stage of the game they are actually pretty decent when also other kingdoms don't have all that many uh, good uh, units available So this first episode is getting quite long, um, I honestly thought I would have managed a little bit more but the cold situation really uh, set us back uh, significantly uh, so I'm sorry about that one more time <coughs> but um, uh, yeah like from second one already it's gonna be uh, way more action going on so uh, you know stay tuned for that. Um, I will still uh, wait a few more minutes I guess in this before I finish this one up uh, to make sure that I have started building the uh, swordsmith and from the uh, from the next episode I will build the army from swordsmen and actually uh, attack and successfully um, conquer the uh, castle of Armenia of kingdom of Armenia and you may notice that sometimes this province or this castle names are the same as the kingdom itself like Georgia for example here I have only one but if you go here Armenia has already two provinces two towns and one is called Armenia itself and another one for example Kurdistan <clears throat> so my first stop would be uh, Armenia itself and uh, so it's a great uh, province to conquer because they have this uh, coastal village so you know you have docks and stuff like that uh, this generates extra bit of gold and also um, I think uh, like by itself even if you don't do anything generates one or two extra gold and plus somehow it increases I think the trading value or something like that so it's very good to have it and plus you can build a ship later on here and have it docked in your port but you know we are not there yet <coughs> okay 1100 gold we have so let's go with swordsmith now generally I also like uh, archers a lot uh, but at this level I prefer swordsmen uh, in early game uh, as opposed to archers so this one is 300 workers in total uh, you know it's not gonna be that long either but if we take a look here they cost um, 300 uh, gold each unit swordsman so for a uh, nine units I would need uh, 2700 and that is quite a way to go uh, so uh, I, I don't think I'm gonna wait that long now uh, in this uh, first episode I would finish this right here and um, just um, jump into the uh, army building and conquering from the in the second one so yeah, I think that would make sense because it's probably an hour long episode already um, anyway I hope I managed to uh, explain a few things here um, and you know if you have any questions you can let me know in the comments um, and uh, Alright, so I'm just gonna finish it up here. Thank you for uh, watching and um, I'll just uh, see you in the next episode.